Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I am Jessica Del Mar. This is the Oneness Podcast. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the 8-8 Lionsgate portal. If you haven't yet listened to my last episode, which was the August Ascension Energy, go ahead and listen to that because it breaks down a lot of the energy being amplified with this Lionsgate portal. However, there's a couple of other things that came through for this 8-8 Lionsgate portal, and it includes uh, more of an activation of our multidimensionality. And the things that came through that we'll talk more about is our inner truth and this field of unification. So this Lionsgate portal is really calling us to embrace our multidimensionality. We're stepping more and more into our multidimensionality to the point where it's hard to deny it. We have to sink and surrender into it. And for a lot of people, fighting their multidimensional self is what strengthens their suffering in wherever they are. And for a lot of other people, the shift into multidimensionality requires this very lengthy period of time in between. And this in between time is really harnessing a lot of faith and trust, not only within yourself and your journey, but within this greater and higher power that you would consider God, the universe or source. Because in order to embrace more of your multidimensionality, you have to be able to open yourself up to more of yourself And when you open yourself up to more of yourself, you will eventually understand how everything is connected, how you in this physical body is not just you in this physical body, but that you are also connected and part of a much greater spiritual ecosystem, if you will. Everything playing out perfectly for this now moment experience to be had by you. So it's time to embrace your multidimensionality. You are more powerful than you think you are, but it all starts with how you embrace your now moment and what you're allowing and opening up to in your present moments. So if you're able to surrender into your now moment and release the grasp of your past and your future especially, you will reveal the true gifts of this 8-8 Lionsgate portal. So this is important. A key factor to embracing your multidimensionality is letting go of your past and your future. So if you still feel very connected to and attached to your past and your future, then you're going to feel more of that suffering in the now moment because you're being asked to let go. You're being asked to, it's kind of like showing me a vision of a person at the top of the slide. And like, all you have to do is let go of the bars in order to just slide down the slide. But it's scary. There's a lot of fear involved. There's a lot of emotion involved. There's a lot of past memories that keep thoughts alive in the current moment. So there's a lot of breaking down of that illusion, which we've been going through for a very long time, but it is intensifying within a lot of people. So there's a breaking down of illusion, which is essentially the letting go of your past and your future attachments in order to embrace or in order to let go enough and surrender enough to embrace the now moment for what it exactly is. Your now moment is not just a present moment in time. Your now moment is a complete surrendering to an unfolding experience that goes beyond even your thoughts and your feelings. Your now moment is simply your existence as a form connected to a a greater spiritual body. And that's just the basis of things. So if you're open enough in allowing that greater connection, form, and spirit to be made within your channel right here and right now, then there's so much potential, so much possibility that can move through you by merging those two worlds, which is form and spiritual. And so it's a complete experience of what's unfolding for you right now 
while at the same time you still have to be in the body enough to be part of that experience. So it takes this fine tuning where you can still be part of this greater unfolding experience while being in the body and being very present with what's unfolding, but at the same time, not allowing yourself to get super caught up in or super attached to things enough to create suffering but still be part of things. And the thing is, is that we are human beings. And so I think harnessing the now moment is something that we're all still fine tuning and figuring out the exact possibilities that are available here because of our humanness that draws us out of the now moment whenever we do get caught up in things or whenever we do feel strong feelings for things, whenever we do feel like we're on that roller coaster of our past and our future getting involved. And especially because we all are still going through our healing, we all are go still going through the letting go process, we all are still going through the process of releasing attachments to a lot of things. And so embracing the now moment, we just have to really consider that it is a point of pure possibility. But even within our now moment, we can observe a shifting world all around us, which involves highs and lows and past and future and positive and negative and ups and downs. And all of those things, the duality, are all points of expansion. And so we understand you can't have low without high and high without low, positive without negative, negative without positive. We understand that they give rise to each other. Those are all points of expansion. But when we're caught up in it, we don't understand the true expansion happening for us. And so the now moment is so important because from this place of this point of pure possibility, we can observe all of the points of expansion and pull in those points of expansion into our point of pure possibility of the now moment to allow for the, the expansion to actually take place. So that's what it means by being in the now moment, but still being part of your world of duality playing out for you. It's not like you're in the now moment and nothing's happening and you're just in the center of the storm in this completely peaceful place. You're still very much part of your duality reality. But what does it mean to be in the now moment and be part of that duality reality, right? It's now just this shift in perspective, a shift in awareness that creates from this point of potentiality or from this point of possibility, pulling in the expansion from the points of expansion in duality and allowing it to move through you as a as a point of possibility, no longer a point of suffering, um, because outside of the now moment, you are pulling in suffering, you're allowing the energy of suffering to move through, to move through you and to perpetuate um, all of those points of expansion in exactly the way they are, rather than the way that they can be or the way that they can become. So going back to the two specific gifts of this 8-8 Lionsgate portal. The first thing is truth. I spoke a little bit about inner truth in the last episode for August Ascension Energy, but inner truth is such a powerful activation with this Lionsgate portal that there's more information to come through. And of course, a powerful activation for August. It's something that's going to continue to build and continue to motivate you and continue to expand you because we can't step into what's next for us without fully solidifying our inner truth. And our inner truth is something that is constantly and consistently growing and expanding for us. So specifically, this truth energy with this 8-8 portal is about the awareness and knowledge of who you truly are so that you may find stability and strength in an ever-changing timeline. This is powerful because so many of us are experiencing this shift in our stability, in our security, in our safety, in our strength. And for a lot of people, it leaves them feeling very, very vulnerable, very much in instability and insecurity. And so it's just simply, again, it goes back to being in this in-between space. 
when all of these things are shifting over or turning over. And so part of us harnessing more of our inner truth is part of us harnessing more of this newfound stability and strength and foundation, not in an old way of thought or an old way of thinking or the past and the future, which are also very unstable as well. But it's about shifting all of that, what we thought was stable or stability or what we thought was security or what we thought was strength and safety, but was actually very vulnerable things and not really built upon a solid foundation. And so we're shifting into something with more of a solid foundation that will show us what real strength and stability and safety and security looks like and feels like through our inner truth. There's a lot of throat activations with the month of August. I spoke about this in August Ascension Energy video. But again, it has a lot to do with this powerful pull of the Lion's Gate portal, which is opening up the throat in so many new ways. The throat signifies the reception and expression of our inner truth, as well as how we embody our greater purpose. We're no longer in the landscape of shifting timelines, but we're in the stability of our now moment multidimensionality. Or in many ways, we're moving into it. Again, there's that in-between period. So this means that what we're learning is that we can observe the shifting landscape around us and still stay true to ourselves as everything around us changes. This is powerful because it means that we stay true to our North Star, if you will, or our North Pointing Compass and know internally our path and our direction and be confident in our path and our direction instead of getting caught up in the illusion that might be playing out outside of us or all around us which if we are caught up in it can very easily sort of wrap us into it and take us off course. Another aspect of our inner truth is focus. So our inner truth keeps us focused and in alignment with the greater unfolding that we know that we're part of if we can only continue to follow how our inner navigation, truth, knowledge, and inspiration are leading us. So when we are hooked into our inner truth and we understand our north, if you will, then it also helps to solidify a focus for us or it helps to streamline us into more of a focused place because we understand where we're headed. We might not necessarily understand what the steps are or even the greater picture of where we're headed, but we can kind of feel our way there. We understand this deeper feeling, even if we might not understand in in a mental space. Our inner truth often works within this deeper sense or feeling and does not necessarily work um, on the surface level in terms of thoughts or ideas, but it certainly feeds our thoughts and ideas if we allow ourselves to strengthen our stability within our inner truth. Your inner truth will be your main force of direction. So the vision that was shown to me was if you are able to honor how your inner truth is expressing itself and desiring to show up, you sort of enter into this open freeway, completely free, and you're able to kind of breeze your way through driving the car on this open freeway. This means that things start showing up for you in alignment with how you are allowing your inner truth to show up for you or in a way where you are honoring your inner truth to move through you and you're not stifling it. So things will show up for you in alignment with how open you are with your inner truth. And this means how open you are to living your inner truth, to honoring how your inner truth expresses itself. And this is simply honoring how you're feeling in every moment, even what you're thinking in every moment. It's honoring who you are instead of allowing external things to tell you who you are. On the other hand, the vision that was shown to me was because inner truth is our main force of direction, it's very hard to deny it. So the vision that came through is that same freeway, but it's clogged and backed up with cars. 
And so you're going to feel the pushback and resistance when you go against your inner truth. You're going to feel yourself stuck in traffic and feeling the resistance and feeling things not working out for you when you go against your inner truth or when you allow others to override your inner truth ideas and feelings. It doesn't mean that every wall that appears for you is means that you're not following your inner truth because we certainly are going to have difficulties and challenges in our lives. So every time that there's a hurdle, it doesn't mean, oh, you're not following your inner truth. It's just simply asking you as you're going through this hurdle or this challenge or this difficulty, can you follow your inner truth? Can you honor your inner truth in the way that you move through this challenge? And be, and that's where you're going to find, that's where you're going to feel whether you can move through the challenge with more more ease or more difficulty. Your inner truth will show you where your path is and it's becoming more undeniable again because your inner truth is going to show you, it's going to help lead you and guide you. But if you're still feeling uncertain about what your next steps are, don't worry because again, there is this large portion of in-between time as a lot of those things flip over for you as you sort of find the groove and alignment of what that inner truth feels feels like to you. And in a lot of ways, this in-between time means that you have space to bring this sort of quiet and stillness into your space enough to begin reconnecting to what that inner truth is trying to say. Or again, fine-tuning the harnessing of that inner truth for you because just fine-tuning or harnessing the inner truth means that there's a lot, that there's a process or journey of stripping away, of redefining what the inner, of what your inner truth is, of recalling, of, of letting go of things that are not your inner truth. And so during that process, again, even in the in-between process, many people are finding themselves feeling isolated and alone in many ways. But it's only because God, the universe, source, is trying to speak to you and trying to get you to hear it. And this has a lot to do with opening yourself up in that space of the in-between. And the more that you open yourself up, the more you're able to fine-tune those inner deeper callings and feelings, and the more you're able to hear that deeper source within. The time spent in between is a powerful activation of faith and trust, two very essential things on this journey at this time. Your life going forward is not being created through that default illusion of suffering like it was in the past, but it must be a life that is true to you. And although the journey of aligning with your inner truth can sometimes mean letting go of many things that do not align with it, you will ultimately find the joy of living in alignment with an inner truth rather than against it. The next thing that wanted to come through with this 8-8 Lionsgate portal is the, the realm of unification. And essentially, this is a state of consciousness that we're moving into, a unified field of consciousness. And with this brings the knowledge of how to bridge your past and your future or do or duality aspects so that you are always in your now moment and receiving the potentials within that now moment. Again, this goes back into what I was talking about, where that now moment is a point of potential or a point of possibility and your ability to bring all of these separating aspects, the duality reality together into you know again those points of expansion into the point of possibility of your now moment to allow for that expansion to express itself and create itself manifest in all of these new ways through a point of possibility rather than suffering or rather than keeping things as they are ultimately all things unify in a field of truth and so this a field of unification is connected to our building of that inner truth. And so again, because we're integrating the navigational system of our inner truth, 
all things must therefore begin to align and unify towards that inner truth. This doesn't mean that everything is going to be easy, come swiftly, or even be desirable, but it does mean that everything you are going through is for the purpose of strengthening and harnessing greater connection to your inner truth because the greater connection you have to your inner truth the stronger the point of possibility or potential it is that you have within you as that channel of energy to allow all points of expansion in a duality reality to move through you as pos- as pure possibility and potential Your inner truth is always equivalent to how much you trust yourself and your journey. And so when you don't trust yourself, you grant the power of truth to be established or taken over, if you will, by other entities that are not you. Ultimately, trusting yourself deepens into a greater a connective trust, if you will, within a higher power. And this is because your spiritual nature teaches you where you come from. So the more you dive into that inner truth, the more you become aware of your of the greater you. And in becoming aware of the greater you, you start to connect with a higher power of some shape or form. So trusting in a higher power is different from giving your trust away uh, to to things outside of you um, that can take over your trust or your inner truth when you don't have it within you. So it's different when there's a higher power because ultimately that higher power exists within you, not outside of you. So even when you have moments where you feel like you don't trust yourself, and that's definitely possible on any journey, no matter where you are on your journey, you're going to doubt or you're going to not trust yourself. Your ability to still trust in that higher power, God, source, universe, is still activated through you If you say, I might not trust myself, me here in the physical, but I trust, I still trust this higher power, this God source universe that is moving through me. And so I'm going to let, even if I don't trust myself, that means that that is almost a deep, deeper letting go where you're getting out of your own way and you're allowing this greater higher power, God source universe to just fully move through you and take you to where you need to go because you've stepped aside from yourself, if you will. You got out of your own way. And so trusting in a higher power to guide you through is about being open enough to receive more of what, of who you truly are and more of what is true to you. Because when you allow your higher power to move you and guide you, you trust in that higher, in that higher power to move and guide you into spaces that you, that, that align with your inner truth, that align with your spiritual nature and that align with your greater purpose. A main component of trust is knowing that there is a purpose in wherever you are. So whether you are where you want to be or not, you know that in that very moment, you are where you're supposed to be. So you build trust by building and maintaining open pathways within yourself so that you're receptive to your environment and allowing enough to be able to learn from it too. What this does is it builds bridges and stabilizes foundations for your trust to then build and create upon. So when you trust wherever you are, you're also in the realm of unification. Again, those things are connected. When you trust or you're harnessing that inner truth, you're also harnessing a realm of unification. So for example, whether you are sick or healthy, happy or sad, wealthy or poor, you have or have not, when you know or you trust that you are loved and provided for by a greater and higher power that you know unites all things, then you can move more easily with the flow of how things show up for you. Not only that, but you can become open to embracing a life that can fulfill possibility and potential because there's very little holding you back because you have very little resistance to things when you're in that state of unification. So sometimes 
we want so much to be healthy, wealthy, and happy, but because we might be holding so much traction in the opposite direction, it becomes harder to let go and fully be in the fulfillment of the things that we're asking for. God, the universe, source, wants us to be all that we want and ask for, but first, we are in the most vulnerable place of needing to understand how we already are it. And the best place to feel how we already are what we don't have is to simply surrender into the love that is available for us abundantly and all around us. God, the universe, source is all around us. And instead of asking for things that we don't have, if we can just be present with the miracles that do exist right now all around us, we can let go enough to welcome all things in. So a big part of this process of unification or the journey of unification is being able to sit with our separating aspects. And sometimes this is one of the hardest things that we can do when there are parts of ourselves that we've spent so much time resisting, suppressing, or fighting with, right? So this is a, a challenging thing to go through for a lot of people, but it's as challenging as it is also rewarding when you're able to bring those separating aspects into conscious union and and also inner peace as well. And not only that, but it's also necessary because in this age of unification, as we're moving into unification consciousness, the key to opening the doors to be fully in it is to be able to see and be with all of the parts of ourselves that we hold separate from ourselves. And so, again, we want to be happy, healthy, and wealthy, right? But have we sat down long enough with the parts of ourselves that still feel sad, sick, and poor? Have we sat down long enough with the full spectrum of what we want and what we do not want long enough to realize that we are loved by a divine force either way. I think that's a big thing. That's a big thing that's been coming through recently is whether you, you're wealthy or poor, whether you're sick or healthy, what, whether you're happy or sad, what's the common denominator there? The common denominator is not anything that has to do with healthy or sick, wealthy or poor, happy or sad. The common denominator is you. The common denominator is you as this being in flesh. And not only that, if we're having the, these separating thoughts or feelings or separating consciousness and we're caught up in the separation, we forget that underneath all things underneath all forms of duality is this deeper unconditional love that a greater unifying consciousness has for us and we forget it because we get caught up in the duality of the things that we want and the things that we don't want whether we're sick or healthy whether we're happy or sad whether we're wealthy or poor and and we forget that there's this underlying love that just loves us the way we are whether we are sick or healthy whether we are happy or sad whether we are poor or wealthy and i think in many ways as we strip down all these separating pieces of us or parts of us and come back into remembrance of who we truly are, it's about remembering that, hey, I'm, I'm loved just the way that I am. And I've been caught up so much in these separating parts of myself. Why? Is it because I'm seeking or searching for a deeper love or seeking this deeper fulfillment or this deeper purpose that I don't realize that I already have within me in some way, shape, or form that is already the life force that creates me and, and that allows me to be me and allows me to have this separating consciousness to begin with. It's remembering that you already have it within you. And I think in many ways for myself, at least, this week leading up to the 8-8 portal has been a lot about reconnecting to that divine, unconditional love that 
that loves me fully for who I am, regardless if what I'm seeking, I don't yet have. And in a lot of ways, when we get caught up in like the things that we want that we don't yet have or, or our lack consciousness, um, it's easy to feel into the unworthiness and it's easy to feel helpless or hopeless and easy to get down on yourself or be hard on yourself. And so sometimes there have been mornings where I'm waking up and I'm feeling a little bit of that hopelessness and I'm feeling a little bit of that sadness too. And I've been really sitting with that when I'm waking up feeling that way. And when I med- meditate upon it, you know, spirit has been talking to me about this deeper love. Like if I can just feel that deeper God's love, source's love, the universe's love, that whether I have this thing or not, if I can feel that love, then I know that I already have everything that I'm looking for, everything that I'm searching for. And that feel, it it fulfills me, it fills me up with this deeper sense of just, of purpose, this deeper sense of trust too, going back to the activations. It's just, it, I, I just lean more into that trust and faith in exactly where I am. And I think that's so important at this time. That's a huge activation at this time. So going back to that divine source love that is here for us, telling us that it doesn't matter what we're stuck in. Do you remember that I love you, right? God loves us. Source loves us. The universe loves us. And if we can just feel that, then we wouldn't be so stuck in whatever we're stuck in. It's, it's almost like the, that's the way through is remembering that love. Because part of unifying these separating parts of us is again, like, have we really sat down long enough with ourselves, with all of these separating aspects of ourselves to know that we here in this body are actually the source that unifies the the separation. We are the source that unifies the dark and the light, the high and the low, the positive and the negative, the good and the bad. We are the source that unites through our observation, through our love, through our understanding, through our witness. But more importantly, again, it's bringing us back to the source of our love, of what loves us, what loves us so much that we exist here today. And and so we cannot do any sort of unifying in our experience as the source that unites through our observation, through our understanding, through our love. We can't do any of that without the blueprint of a much greater source that shows us how everything connects and unifies despite the appearances of separation. And that's why it's about coming back to that greater source that loves us so that we can understand the unification that is occurring within that greater source so that we can remember that we are also a source of unification in the world around us. And that's a lot of information, I know, Um, but also a lot to sit on with this 8-8 Lionsgate portal. I hope that that brought some things up for you to sit with, for you to journal with, for you to reflect on, and and that it helps bring some clarity as you move through this 8-8 Lionsgate portal yourself, bringing in more trust and unification into your own life so that you can also see and witness more trust and unification unfolding for you. Thank you so much for being here. Happy 8-8 Lionsgate portal. And... If you'd like to read this transmission, I'm posting it over on my newsletter. You can sign up and receive all of my written transmissions and newsletters straight to your inbox. Thank you again for being here. I'll see you in the next episode. Oneness, love, and peace be with you.